Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome to episode 21 of Space Engineers. So today, I've built a large ship. I don't often build large ships because I really don't see the purpose of them. Obviously, they look massive, they look really cool, but the problem is, is they're not really as useful as a number of small ships. So this is what I've built today. It originally started out being a similar shape to the Star Trek Enterprise where it had this big round thing but I changed that and built these small individual individual life support sort of pods is what I've called. So on the back here we've got a small turret that can be used and manned and basically defend from all different angles. We've also got um, a gravitational field built into this ship that will work as a force field to protect us from gravity weapons so someone commented in the video last time saying do you reckon you could put it on a ship and it took a little bit of time and it took a little bit, a bit to work out but what I actually worked out was is if you do it correctly you can have your gravity generators on the side and turn them on and off at the correct moments in time say when you get into a battle situation then you can actually do it without having everyone inside be really pissed off. So I'm just going to launch something at it just to demo it. So we've got a stone in our inventory and I'm just going to drop that. So say this was a, like a stone warhead. And basically this should slow down and the gravity field should project it back like that. There you go. So if it was a larger warhead, this whole side armor on each side, top, bottom and side will just project the warhead back there. Or even break it up if it's got a casing around it. So on top here we have the little turret. I'll just show you this briefly. The idea is this is not an assault um, sort of craft. This is more of an infantry support and um, carrier vehicle. So basically here's the turret. You've got a little variety of machine guns on the front and basically it allows one person to do a little bit of extra defense on the vehicle itself. So back out of that thing. So that's full rotational. Pretty nice. You might be a little bit exposed so I might add some extra things there. So moving inside, with the introduction of motors, they've allowed you to do a few different door designs. First of all, I tried to do it on a cog. And I definitely think you can do it on like a cog wheel and basically as you turn the cog the wheel will come back with spikes but it didn't work and it was just taking too long and it was damaging parts because obviously things collide with each other. So here is a traditional door, I'll just show you the difference and here is the door using a motor. So these are just like two little ideas I've done. You can have this door so it flip folds up into the ceiling, that's probably the most efficient way of doing it. I've just put it down here to demo it. So I'll just show you the both of them. You've seen this one hundreds of times. This is just the um, standard sort of on-off lock door. So it basically works on um, lo unlocking the gravity, um, well not the gravity generators, the landing gears. So if we unlock them, uh, and then we just basically shift the one way or another. So like this way for our instance. Um, and we just drift through here. We don't want to overdo it because we'll end up going through the wall knowing my look and then once it's open you will know because your gravity generators will come back on and like so so there's a little bit of damage there only purely due to I've not aligned this door yet because it's still a working process so that's basically how that door opens like that and then this one opens in the other way so what you'd basically do is get in this cockpit here I'll just show you this there we go, and now you get a weird blue screen in your face, but hold on, can we get out of this so we can actually see what we're doing? Yeah, we can. So basically that's the side of the door. So we need to press P to unlock it. So it's now only in proximity, and then we just use um, our rotary function of the motor on the side, and then we can just lift it up and close it like so. So we're lifting it up, and then say so we're, we're, we're happy with that position. And then we just release it and we could relock it in place. But I was just demoing to you there, guys, some ideas of different ways you can do your doors. So sorry if I rotating you around and throwing you off. But yeah, that's basically two ways you could do your doors. So you could have that folding off into the ceiling. That would look pretty nice, I guess, if that's what you wanted. And now I've got some stupid lag for some reason. But anyhow, we'll move on to this actual area here. So this is where the majority of the ships are docked. Behind each ship there's a number of containers where basically you can store tools to repair them and so on. And you've just got them standard sort of bats, sort of ships with one single landing gear that can lock on pretty tight. So now we move into this section. We've just got, these are the ships that are badly damaged and we super need to fix up. And we have the stairs going to both of the, um, how to say, it, life module support pods, you might want to call them or something. So we need to head up here at some speed. And uh, then once we're up here, 
we should be able to navigate this place. So this is the initial hallway when you come up. And through here we can go left and right. Left will be a basketball court and some other things once it's been built for some space games for the crew. And down this corridor we have number one. This is the actual officer's crew sort of quarters. We've got showers in the middle and then we've got little um, crew support modules in here with little beds. Little bit of lighting, all you need. So let's go back down this corridor. We take a right. And then once we go down here, we come to the armory. So the armory will eventually be full of weapons. I've been trying to get more and more weapons out of the box um, by doing this method, like drag and drop, and then just throwing them onto the floor. But um, obviously it's not been working too well because you have to like drop a hundred crates to find like one gun in them. So I've only possibly got two. Uh, and this is the second part of the armory. And over here is basically this deck's supplies. So you could be at, well, at sea in space for months on months end so this would be all the supplies the crew quarters would need just to keep operational and finally I'll take you to the engine room the engine room is all the way back at the other end of the ship it's a pretty nice simple design but I've made it as compact as possible so what really sparked the idea of this ship in is because I've not really built a big ship for a while and every time I build a big one I always try to fill how to say it fill it with purposes because sometimes you can just build a ship that's too big and you'll have loads of empty space and it'll just feel pretty worthless so up here on the left is the entrance to actually the bridge the bridge is not too fancy so I'm not going to take you up there but moving back through the hangar we have the engine room at the opposite side so let's just um, drop that down and we'll slide on through so all these lights and this just the size of it makes it a little bit laggy but we've got a secret entrance this is the actual engine itself I made it look a bit fancy as you can tell but we have the actual power plant door behind here so this is where the actual real magic happens through all these security doors so you could knock out that room and it wouldn't make any difference so everything actually functions in here and as you can tell it's a very big engine because it's a very big ship but it's not completed yet and that is the problem I've got quite a few things to decide number one is I've, I've got this problem of which way should the actual ship be should it be the way with the the nose cone sort of pointing forward should that be the forward part or should the um, big circles at the side be the actual eight, well the rear because I was thinking about it and it does look it looks pretty nice it looks pretty tasty from that direction I'll just show you like I, I, like, I don't know though because that could be the front but this could be the front as well because you could add something to the back to make that look like because you could have this as the front I don't know if that looks cool. Or you could have it the other way around. Because the other way around, it looks like, you know, a classic sort of spaceship. I guess you could say. Hmm. Well, I'll leave that up to you anyway. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. Um, this ship's got a lot of work to be done on it. And if um, if you want me to experiment with anything on it, such as um, force fields and so on, I'm going to try to implement as many things as the previous episode. We've got some torpedoes to add. Um, I think... The problem with the torpedoes at the moment is the gravity based um, launches I don't think are as effective as the traditional sort of firing ones. Um, I also had the idea of um, like a corkscrew torpedo where you could have a motor on one end spinning and when it impacts the actual ship it'll like uh, drill a like, sort of hole into it but I don't know how that will work, we'll have to test that in a future episode. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.